5.2a, area, volume, and temperature, area of a rectangle and parallelogram. The area of a rectangle can be given by the formula area equals the length times the width. We must define what the length and the width of a rectangle is. The length is the longer of the two sides and the width is the shorter of the two sides. Next, the area of a parallelogram is similar and that is the area of the base times the height. The base is the long edge here that is perpendicular to the height. The height can be drawn anywhere between the top two parallel, where the parallelogram gets its name, lines. As you can see, the upper and the lower line are parallel and we can draw a height. The height must meet at a perfect right angle or 90 degree angle for it to be the height. This means that this is the height and this is the base. Since we could not draw a line horizontally and have a perfect 90 degree angle, the two sides cannot be the base. The important fact here is that the height must meet the base at a perfect right angle. Example 1, finding the area of a rectangle. The rectangle shown has two sides labeled, one 8 inches and one 15 inches. We can see that the first one is our width and that the second one is our length mainly because the length has to be the longer side. We use the area formula that area equals length times width. This means that our area is 15 inches times 8 inches. When we do 15 times 8, we get 120. Just as it would occur with variables in which an x times an x becomes an x squared, the same thing occurs with units, in which the, we have an inch times an inch becomes an inch squared. Therefore, the area of this rectangle is 120 inches squared. Example 2, we are finding the area of a parallelogram. Remember, you can identify a parallelogram because the sides opposite each other are parallel on both sides. We then must identify the pieces of the formula, which is area equals base times height. Our base has to be at a right angle with the height, which means that our base must be the 21 inches and that our height must be the 7 centimeters. This means that we have 21 centimeters times 7 centimeters. When we multiply these together, we get 147 centimeters squared. Remember, multiplying units times themselves causes them to be squared just as a variable would. In summary, you must identify the length and width or the base and height of a shape before you can use the formula. Remember that a base and a height must be at a 90 degree or right angle.